Good, we're back here in the Julia box and you see the little home page there and you can see, uh, I think it happened already right at the end of the next section, it loaded my file structure. So these are the files that I already have, folders I should say, that I already have on my Julia box. It works just like a hard drive on your computer but it lives in the cloud and how you can make these little uh, folders or folders with inside of folders, you just say new folder and Oh, server error, that's phenomenal, that's a good start, let's try again, new folder, there we go, it makes, oh, it, it did it twice, so there was a little hiccup, no problems there, you don't have, when you create a new folder like that, you don't have the control over what you call the folder, but what we do have is the following, I can click on that, and we see a little rename and delete button appears, let's delete that folder, which happened twice, now this folder, I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to rename that folder, just call it a new folder. New folder, hit enter or return, and there we have. Now we seem to have quite a bit of server errors at the moment, it just might, it's just a connection issue. I'm just going to hit this little reload button there, and there we go, we see a new folder there. I can click that one, uh, my new folder, there's another folder I made previously, I can just delete both of those, no problem. Another little error, we just sync that. Now, unfortunately, that is how it seems to go this morning, but certainly that's not the norm. You shouldn't worry about these things at all. The one folder that I've already created contains our first lesson. There's the lectures on Julia. So if I click on that, obviously that folder opens up. I can see the folder structure and I can go back home or I'm in this folder now. Once I'm in this folder, I can click New and start a new notebook. So if I start a new notebook, we see that this tab opens up and it's going to download from the internet a new clean notebook and this is what it looks like. You can see the Julia kernel starting up there. Please wait. Kernel is now ready. We're going to write a Julia file in Julia version 0.3.11. So let's just get familiar with this. Up top here, it says untitled. Once again, I can click on that and say my new file. So it just has a name, so it's a file that lives there now. And these are the code blocks. Inside of these little blocks, I can write my code and I can execute my code. So we'll learn what all of these are about. One that you can look out for now is just the save button. If you've written some lines of code, it will just save that for you. Once again, I seem to have a very uh, bad connection today. It's not going to do much for me. I'll, uh, for the next bit of uh, these lessons, I'll try to reboot the system. These are where you write your lines of code. Very easy to see though, this little drop down box. Each of these little cells can be either lines of code or lines of markdown. We won't worry about these two. Markdown is where you just write normal text. I can write a normal line of text there, execute it, and it will look like a web page with nice text on it. I can even format this text using either Markdown or HTML, normal HTML code that I can put into these little cells and I can have nice words in between my lines of code. And this is what is referred to as a notebook. This is a Jupyter notebook running right inside. I didn't have to install Jupyter notebooks. I did not have to install Julia. I'm running everything right here. So in the next section, we're going to start our first look at the actual language, which is what you're here for.